Um, so now we have some uh, short inputs from Phoebe, Ewan and Ryan, which will be case studies. I think we've got five minutes each um, and we're starting with Phoebe. Uh, Phoebe Cochrane is a sustainable economy officer at Scottish Link. So Phoebe, over to you. You're on mute. Mm. I think I've frozen. Oh, God. Seems okay. We can, we can hear you fine. Your screen wasn't sharing, though. Okay. All right. Sorry. It froze. It completely froze for a moment. Right. I'm going to have to, sorry, do the screen share again. Right, that seems to be working. Sorry. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, sorry. I, <laughs> something strange happening at this end. So I'm going to talk quickly about the National Performance Framework. Um, I'm Phoebe Cochran from Scottish Environment Link. Um, and I was involved in some work on the National Performance Framework a few years ago. So forgive me if there are other people in the audience who have a more sort of direct and insightful experience of, of this um, tool. So um, the Scotland's National Performance Framework was launched um, in two 2007. Um, it really gave the public sector a sort of clear vision of the kind of Scotland that the government um, um, envisioned um, and uh, central to it was a, a core purpose which was to um, create a more successful country with opportunities for all of Scotland to flourish through increasing sustainable economic growth and this was underpinned by a number of outcomes and some indicators um, and importantly it was seen as a sort of beyond GDP initiative so um, instead of having progress um, sort of monitored through single indicator or, or predominant indicator of GDP, this sort of gave a dashboard of indicators, all of which were sort of supposedly of equal importance. Um, it was put into legislation in 2015, um, at which time ministers have, have had a duty to um, develop outcomes for Scotland and to review them every five years. And it was last updated in 2018. And this diagram is a summary of that latest update. So the purpose was slightly widened. Um, it's got additional values and those sort of petals to the flower. Those are the outcomes um, which were widely consulted on and they describe the sort of the, the, the vision for the type of country that the people of Scotland would like to see. Um, and also in that review, it was cross-referenced to the Sustainable Development Goals. So there's a much more elaborate diagram which shows that sort of linkage between our national performance framework and the global goals. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a series of indicators. There are 81 national indicators which are linked to these outcomes. Um, and as Matthew mentioned earlier today, um, in, in summary, the sort of status is that we're kind of doing okay. You know, most indicators are quite sort of steady. There are more indicators which are improving rather than worsening, um, but um, it doesn't show a, a, a sort of enormous success. Um, but obviously, to get more detail, you need to drill down into individual indicators. So to give an idea of, I think against the economy um, outcome, there are 11 indicators and these are just four of them. So it just gives you an idea of, of the type of indicators. So as well as a tool for sort of measuring success, um, it's also, um, it, it encourages joined up policy making. So, um, in the development and scrutiny of policy, um, um, the sort of the aim of contributing to a number of goals should be kept as central and, and critically 
it should be um, made sure that you're not detracting from any of the other goals. Obviously, individual policy areas are not going to be relevant to all goals, but you want to make sure that you're not, no other goals are being adversely affected, and, and that way um, you get more policy coherence. And for that to happen, obviously, needs to be a sort of breadth and depth of familiarity with the um, framework. And I think, although government has been working hard to embed it, it's fair to say there's probably more could be done on that. Um, we do increasingly see the goals, um, sorry, the outcomes, the outcomes referenced in, in policy documents. So there is some evidence of its use. Um, and some ideas for what could come next. So we could have, you know, the programme for government and budget aligned with the outcomes of our national performance framework. Um, so uh, some of you may well have be aware that New Zealand's last budget was um, presented in a way that aligned with their well-being framework. I'm not quite sure what it what it's called exactly. Um, and there could be further legislation to sort of um, make its, its use mandatory as well as its existence. So we could have a duty on ministers to report against the outcomes. Um, so that's just a really brief overview and um, maybe we'll discuss it um, in the breakout groups. Thank you. Phoebe, thank you. That was fantastic. National Performance Framework. So uh, next up we have Ewan Mairns. Uh, Ewan is a strategy team leader within Scottish Enterprise. He's closely involved with coordinating Scottish Enterprise's input into the Scottish Government's 10-year strategy and also led Scottish Enterprise's uh, strategic approach to supporting a just net zero transition. Uh, Ewan, over to you. Great, thank you, Jimmy, and uh, really good to, uh, to speak to everyone um, and talk a little bit about what Scottish Enterprise uh, is up to. Uh, and it's great to, to have lots of different uh, perspectives. Um, I'm, I'm not an economist, which I think hopefully is a good sign for today's uh, conversation. Um, I'm going to begin actually just with a few, um, uh, um, just tell you a little bit about what Scottish Enterprise said in our response to the government's consultation, um, because I think it, it can reflect a lot of what we said today. So we, we emphasise actually taking forward a 10 year strategy, a longer term strategy, offers a real opportunity uh, to do things differently. Uh, so we said it needed to be a strategy for Scotland, not just for the Scottish Government, public sector and its agencies. Uh, we said it needed to drive bold change, um, able to inspire uh, and unlock new opportunities and action, um, as well as tackle the persistent challenges that Scotland's faced over many years. Um, it needs to be centred on supporting a just net zero transition as part of a new kind of economic model. Um, we said that it should acknowledge that genuine transformational change uh, requires new solutions, as well as a focus on those activities already uh, deliver the best results. So we need to have a good understanding to evaluation of, of what works. And for, last but not least, um, we said it needed to feature excellent execution. So what does that mean? It means that we need really strong alignment at all levels, local, regional and, and national, uh, and also learning from uh, best practice uh, at home uh, and overseas. So that's what we said to the Scottish Government. Um, I want to kind of uh, give you two key messages before I go on to talk about some of the things that Scottish Enterprise is, is doing at the moment uh, in relation to, to net zero specifically, it's this case study. Um, so first of all, um, Scottish Enterprise is, is fully committed to uh, developing a thriving Scottish economy that also serves people and planet. This is at the heart of our uh, business plan and, and will be at the next uh, heart of our next business plan over the next three years. Um, so in June this year, we published our net zero framework for action. Um, it, it's not a long term kind of vague plan, but uh, uh, it's, a, it's an action plan. We're a catalyst for change um, and it commits us to early action. So most of the actions are being front loaded to this year. Uh, and we know that the 2020s, as, as many people said, is, is the decisive decade. So we're, we're working on this uh, right now. Um, second key thing I want to say is that um, the global transition uh, to net zero is a, a massive challenge, as we've heard uh, earlier today. It also brings huge opportunities to develop a better world. 
um, so our focus is, is yes, to make sure that Coach Enterprise itself is doing the right things. But beyond what we can control directly, our focus is really to, to um, influence external change, um, both in Scotland and, and globally. Um, we're also working as part of a shared ecosystem or be like a, a national mission. I mean, everyone's got a role to play. We all have different roles. Uh, we need to align uh, behind that, that shared vision. Uh, and thirdly, um, and perhaps a little bit controversially for some people, I would say that actually we need to acknowledge that many businesses really want to do the right thing. Um, increasingly, uh, using the language of business purpose, so recognizing that the purpose of business is not just profit maximization, it's all about also about delivering social uh, and environmental goals. Um, they know that market signals are, are supporting them, um, big opportunities are being pushed by regulation, by supply chain pressures, and also their investors, their employees, as we've heard earlier, are all saying, well, what, what are you doing uh, to help us transition to a better future? So I think we need to be, we need to be hopeful. Um, so what is Scottish Enterprise doing? So there was a link uh, sent to our net zero framework for action. So essentially, you know, today's all about change, transformational change. And this is a, uh, a change program for our organization from top to bottom. So we talked about strategy, delivery, uh, and also how we change, how we measure impact. And we've just been hearing about the national performance framework. Uh, as I said before, we're not, we're not just talking about it, we're doing it. We're translating Scottish government policy uh, into action, working with businesses, other organizations and, and community uh, communities. Um, I, you know, there's, there's no playbook here. Um, we need to learn from others. We need to be agile and, and change if things aren't working. So that's the approach that we're taking. We don't have all of the answers. Um, and also we're taking a, a broad approach. We talk about net zero, but for us, it, you know, it's a shorthand. So by that, we're talking about emissions reduction. We talk about the economic opportunities that we need to see to take us over the next 25 years and beyond. We're talking about a just transition restoring biodiversity, supporting a circular economy, uh, and last but not least, climate change uh, adaptation. So I was asked to talk about some of the levers. So some of the levers that we're using include funding, uh, best practice tools, uh, training, uh, and also uh, updating and revising our impact measures. So as I say, our focus is on um, uh, influence external uh, change, influence and change. So we're uh, using our funding to incentivize businesses to help deliver um, a just and net zero transition. Um, so we're linking our funding to businesses' commitment for, uh, to fair work and sustainable practices, bringing those together, um, and, and that will be implemented from, from next year. We have, in fact, been um, supporting fair work first uh, for since 2019. So, for example, regional selective assistance scheme, which is a job creation scheme, uh, all of the companies have applied for that. We've offered support in terms of youth employment to create a, uh, an investing in youth policy. Pleased to say that every single business that we, we, we're asked to look at youth employment has taken up that opportunity. So we know this approach works, so we want to, to broaden uh, that out. Uh, we're developing practical online tools for businesses to baseline where they are in terms of their sustainability practices and then track progress over time, compare themselves with the best. Um, secondly, we're embedding net zero goals within decision making. So we're aligning all of our activities with, uh, with net zero at the, the center of our business plan. Uh, right at the moment, we're delivering climate literacy training to all of our staff. If they don't understand what we're talking about, you know, they can't be expected to support others. Um, we've recently updated our uh, project development, project uh, appraisal and approval processes. So we want better projects, which are more directly aligned with our goals. Um, and then finally, as I say, we're looking at uh, performance measures within the, the context of the, uh, the MPA. Um, thirdly, we're, we're also using our funding to support the activities which we know we're going to need to take us into that net zero transition, you know, trying to front load action. So uh, we're introducing a series of uh, funding uh, innovation calls, um, uh, part funded by the Green Jobs Fund, 
So we had a, a call uh, back in July. We'll have, have completed the valuation of those uh, over 200 applications by the end of this month. So we had a fantastic response uh, from companies wanting to create new uh, green and well rewarded jobs. And then finally, we're working with industry uh, and partners to develop strategic programs of, uh, of national uh, and also global significance. So, for example, we heard about it uh, just now. We've got a big program looking at decarbonized heat. Uh, we're also looking at heavy duty zero emission vehicles. And we're also looking at a hydrogen economy. So these are all areas where Scotland's got comparative advantage. We've got skills, we've got assets, we've got some fantastic uh, innovative businesses. So we're supporting them to, to help create the change uh, that we know we need to see. Thank you. Ewan, superb. Thank you so much. What a fantastic um, set of insights. And I really hear the need underpinning all of that is the need to model the model, to be the change and to set an example through your work as well, which is which I just loved. Um, last but not least, we have Ryan Morrison, uh, Just Transition campaigner at the Just, Just Transition Partnership and who has been leading on the Zoom admin for today. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, doing a fantastic job there. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy, um, and thanks everyone. I, I've just had the, the odd moment of spotlighting myself, which feels a little bit egotistical, but here we are. Um, the yeah, I, as Jimmy said, I'm a, I'm a just transition campaigner, but I, I work for Friends of the Earth Scotland. Um, today, I'm speaking on behalf of the the Just Transition Partnership, of which Friends of the Earth Scotland is a co-chair alongside the Scottish Trade Union Congress. Um, and that, that partnership is made up of environmental groups and trade unions um, who have been advocating for a transformative Just Transition since, since 2016. Um, and, and in that time, Just Transition has really risen up the agenda in Scotland. It's something which the Scottish government are increasingly using. Um, we've seen it alongside terms such as wellbeing economy and circular economy, but um, it's one which unfortunately on the ground has been um, lacking in, in results, lacking in delivery. Um, and, and ahead of the Scottish Parliament elections last year, uh, the Just Transition Partnership had been increasingly critical of, of that balance, of, of the mix of rhetoric um, that wasn't being matched by reality on the ground. And the fact that in many proposals that had been forthcoming, um, we, we weren't confident that, that that was going to change anytime soon. So uh, as an example, um, we, the, the Just Transition Partnership had pushed for a Just Transition Commission um, to provide oversight and recommendations to the Scottish Government. That, that went forward, um, but many of the recommendations that were given by the Commission initially weren't, weren't acted upon um, until the final report. We also um, think there should have been a, a greater role given to workers um, who would be affected by the transition, communities as well, and, and to environmentalists. Um, the Just Transition principles, the, the principle that um, this transition should be free, uh, fair to ordinary people, that, that workers in high carbon industry should be protected through that transition, should, should find equivalent opportunity uh, in a green economy, um, have been embedded into the Climate Change Act. But since then, we've not seen necessarily the policy that is necessary to turn that around. And so in terms of, in terms of practical case studies, the things that the partnership have been um, advocating for Really, it takes it takes three strands um, to that. And, and ahead of the election last year, we, we put that to, to all political parties. Um, and really, step one in that is, is to recognise that actually an unjust transition is already underway. Um, we've had years of promises that, that green jobs would be forthcoming, um, and that hasn't materialised. Promises of hundreds of thousands of green jobs are actually far lower uh, even offshore wind jobs have declined in Scotland over the last couple of years, which compared to the actual growth in energy generation is quite striking. Um, and so one of the first things we said was actually, before we can even begin to seriously uh, say to workers and communities across Scotland that a just transition um, is possible, we had to stop what was already unfolding. We had to turn the tide on that now. Um, and and in, in a very specific and practical sense, that meant giving workers a clear offer um, particularly those in high carbon industries, that there would be equivalent opportunities in green jobs. It meant supporting green public transport, purchasing electric buses, providing financial support to local authorities to begin providing their own services, and investment in renewable energy infrastructure, upgrades to ports um, and other ship and yards for manufacturing, um, but also um, ensuring that conditionality is attached to any sort of Scottish government funding um, and support for the industry. But beyond that then, 
it was about setting a new course. What what had to happen? So if we if we address the unjust transition unfolding now, what do we need to do to then structurally tackle the issues that caused that in the first place? Um, and, and when we looked at that, what we were calling for really was for more public ownership, more more public intervention um, to ensure that the systemic issue, which had been a very market led approach to the transition, wasn't allowed to continue uh, unabated. And and what some of the key asks there were around publicly owned energy company. Um, in order to drive renewable energy energy generation, prioritise domestic supply chains and, and provide energy to people at affordable costs before um, any sort of profit motive. Prioritising those that live in fuel poverty, for instance, 25% of people in Scotland live in fuel poverty. So let's have a renewable, let's have an energy supplier that prioritises providing bills in a fairer way. Um, Beyond that, too, it was about ensuring that, that at the heart of all spending decisions was the climate emergency, was ensuring a just transition, making sure that there is that sort of coherence and consistency to what the Scottish Government is doing. Um, and then the third stream was really about the long term planning. This is a big project. I think Craig mentioned 25 years. We know we've got the net zero target. A lot of these ideas need some really serious and careful planning. So that the, the kind of third stream of what we focused on was, well, how do you chart that route? How do you map that course out? Um, and what we called for was national just transition action plans being backed up by a, cl a climate change plan and a rewritten economic strategy that puts just transition at the heart. Um, and, and one of the big things, someone mentioned it earlier on, was about who actually understands just transition. And, and uh, Stephen Lowe mentioned the report of Offshore. That was a report that we, we Friends of the Earth, wrote with Platform and Greenpeace. 91% of um, 1,400 offshore workers who took that um, survey had, had never heard of the term just transition. If it truly is to mean something different, then it has to be bottom up, it has to be the workers and communities that are most likely to be affected sat around the table making decisions for them. So we're about to see a new just transition commission um, from the Scottish Government that will provide annual reports to the Scottish Government and monitoring. Um, and that's what we'll be looking out for. Who's sat around the table? Who is making those decisions? And, and how are we going to make sure that um, this transition is, is more than just um, from polluting industries to green industries, but provide something fundamentally fairer, more democratic and deep rooted within communities and workers' lives. Brian, fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, that's a point that's been made a few times, what you finished on there, this needing to be owned by communities, participative, deliberative discussions and the importance of those. Um, okay.